Welcome to this webinar. I'm Francis Seeley from Enfield Voices and Global Net 21. And this is one of the regular webinars that we do where we interview people who are making a difference uh, locally or nationally or even globally at times. And today we've got, um, we've got Emma Rigby with us. Many people know Emma. Emma started Love Your Doorstep and you, you'll be able to hear about that in a minute. But we're going to talk about a particular initiative that she's developed with other people, and that is community patrols in an area of Enfield where there have been problems around drugs and bullying and harassment, and she'll tell you all about that. I've got Hannah Dyson with me, who's going to help with the interviewing, which is great. Um, and so, uh, you know, let, let's begin and get in this because it, it's a really, really interesting topic. Anyhow, Emma, thank you for joining us. It's great. And I know you're joining us from sunny Spain, and uh, that's nice. And it looks very sunny where you are, even in the room that you're in, which is... <laughs> <laughs> Emma says she, Emma, by the way, is a New Zealander and she says she's been mixing with New Zealanders in the last few days, so we might not be able to understand her, but we'll see. <laughs> Anyhow, Emma, <laughs> let, let's, um, let's, let, let's come to you. I, I gather that, um, you know, you're going to talk to us about the patrols, but first of all, maybe, you know, you could tell people about yourself and Love Your Doorstep. I mean, I'm surprised if people don't know who you are, but there may be some people who don't. So tell us a bit about yourself and Love Your Doorstep. Good morning. Um, thank you, Francis and Henna, as always. Um, I was saying I was a bit nervous about being interviewed today because I'm normally the one doing the interviews. So I'm going to do my best. I'm going to explain um, a little bit about Love Your Doorstep. So Love Your Doorstep set up in 2011 following the London riots. Um, most of you know the night of the London riots, um, Enfield was really badly impacted by that and it was that night that I thought I didn't even know who my neighbours were. So following the London riots um, I set up an initiative that um, after about a year became Love Your Doorstep as you all know it today. Um, so Love Your Doorstep was set up to bring the community back together following that horrific incident that happened on our doorstep, hence the name. Um, also just to reignite community spirit and also to support local businesses and to support the community. So we've been running for eight years now. Eight years, so that's quite incredible really. Um, we've got a team of eight that work for us and all day, every day, we are putting local people in touch with local products and services across the borough. Um, but part of the initiative and, and what was always at the heart of Love Your Doorstep was doing the work that we do in the community. And we've done a lot of community initiatives and got involved over the years in community projects. Um, but the one that we're going to be talking about today is one of great importance. So well, well, let, let's, let, let, let's talk about that now because that's sort of the main topic we're going to talk about. Sure. About the community patrols. So as I said, we've got, um, got Hannah with us. And you can see Hannah now. So over to you, Hannah. I think your passionate interest in community safety um, led you to take action, I understand, Emma, um, because of what happened around the Enfield Grammar School. Um, can you tell us a bit more about um, what happened? And in Sure. Um, I'll just take it back one step. So a lot of you may know I've got two children. And my son started secondary school last year. So he was 10, 11, and off he went to secondary school. And a lot of us parents understand that that's a huge change for us when our children start going to secondary school. They start feeling that little bit of freedom and they're off out the door. But at that point, things were getting really bad in Enfield. And he came home one day and said to me, Mum, I'm really worried about getting mugged. And this is a conversation I'm having with my 10-year-old. And he said, Mum, I just want to ask a question. Um, if one of my friends gets into trouble, do I help him or do I, do I run away? And it was his um, instinct that I knew every part of him would want to help that friend. And I found that a really difficult conversation to be having with my 10-year-old. And every morning when he left the house, I was worried. He had to walk down through the town and catch the bus. He he catches the bus out up onto the A10 and um, a lot of parents were concerned. 
So that's where this first came about, really. And following that, um, I was invited into Enfield Grammar School by Guy Jones Owen, who's one of the governors there. He's the manager at Metro Bank. And um, Guy had obviously been following the work that Love Your Doorstep had done for years, and he felt we were the right people to come in and look at setting up the initiative um, that came off the back of a number of letters that the head teacher had sent out. So your son, had, your son had picked up um, the, the fact that there was a lot of problems around the Enfield Grammar School, maybe in the first few weeks of his school career in secondary school. Yeah, I mean, one thing I want to make very clear here, um, I don't just want to focus on the grammar school. This is a problem across all schools in Enfield. Okay, so the patrolling that we do, which is an Enfield town, we have about five to six secondary schools hitting the town after school. So uh, this wasn't just an issue that Enfield Grammar was facing. Um, the reason it came about was due to the fact that the head teacher of Enfield Grammar uh, was very open and honest with his parents about the issues. Um, and you'll see in previous videos that um, parents really respected that honesty and it was the parents of Enfield Grammar that wanted to do something about it. Okay, so um, you, you've told us a bit about where the idea came from. And in a way, I suppose, um, you know, the idea of the income patrols, you know, logically followed from the way, the, the reason Love Your Doorstep was set up, which was mm. around the riots. So in a way, it's a logical progression. But maybe you could tell us a bit about... Um, what a community patrol is. What do you mean by a community patrol? Sure, so a community patrol is not a new thing. I mean, um, all over the country here in the UK and also in the US, community patrolling, let's liken it to the community um, neighbourhood watch scheme, except community patrols are actually more visible and they're out in the community. Um, and that's what we do. So... Um, the Community Patrol Initiative is basically an extension of the Neighbourhood Watch Scheme, but it's people out there visibly getting involved. And the main thing for us is it's just having that adult presence back on the high streets, back on the streets. And that's what's made the huge difference. Okay, Hannah. And what were the steps to get the uh, initiative going? So did you have meetings with the local police and the bus uh, local business leaders and yourself, Love Your Doorstep? How did you get it going initially? Yeah, so it was really interesting. I, I want to go back to the parents of Enfield Grammar. They really, really wanted to help. And I believe other parents across lots of schools want to help. Um, I'm a huge believer in communities working together, as you would have seen over the last eight years of us working. And something like a community patrol really promotes active citizenship. But what I felt was bubbling was, uh, it was there was a lot of vigilante out there. Look, let's be honest, if your child's mugged, you're going to be extremely angry. And um, what that does to a child, especially boys, um, you know, it, it stays with them for years and years. So parents are concerned. So one of the biggest things we wanted to do was create something that was above board, something that had very clear guidelines, something that was administrated by our team and led by our team. And the biggest thing for me was that we had the police on board with it. So um, before we even launched the patrols or before we even invited parents along to be part of those patrols, it was important for me to get the police and their backing on that. Now, I've worked with the police, um, a number of different police um, policing teams for the last eight years on Love Your Doorstep. So I'm lucky enough to have um, great relationships with our local policing teams. And they put a lot of trust in me to get this scheme up and running. Because, uh, you know, Francis, you know me well. I'm one of these people that just likes to get stuff done. I don't like to talk about stuff too long, but I knew I had the skills and my team had the skills to make sure that this was a sustainable, great model where people could feel like they were getting involved. So we did have the police's backing from the offset. Um, 
then what we did was we held a number of meetings with uh, people in about January who were interested in being involved in the patrol. Initially, we had about 70 people turn up to that first meeting. And I'd say the room was about 50-50. So when I, when I say that, 50% of the people in the room were ready to get going with this. 50% of the people in the room uh, had concerns and they wanted to wait to see how things panned out with it. But for me, I felt we needed to start somewhere. Um, so I was really pleased to have over 50 volunteers register with the scheme after that meeting. Yeah, I, I, I know you're a person who likes to start things straight away. You like to jump in the deep end and then see if you can swim. And I guess yeah. I'm, I'm a bit like that too, so I, I understand that. And you, 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 you've done your research, obviously. You made your contacts. You contacted the police and others. You got the infrastructure together in your own mind. Yeah. And then you got to the stage where you had your meeting and then you had to get volunteers. Now, you could have got anyone. You could have got the wrong people. How did you go about the recruitment process? How did you get the right people that you knew you could trust? So what happened, the people that registered with us, we then went on to hold another couple of meetings before the patrols even started. And we have really strict guidelines as to how the patrols are run. And I just want to run you through what those guidelines are. So number one, we always patrol in twos. Number two, we are not there to get in the way, uh, for example, of drug dealers. We've seen many drug deals going on out there. We're not there to stop people from making their money. Um, that would put the patrol in danger and that would put the volunteers in danger. So it's very, very clear uh, when we induct someone and when they come on board with us that we are there for the children. Okay, so we're there to make the kids feel safe. And we've had some... Um, you know, some really good wins with this. So like in the first week of the patrol starting, uh, we had a couple of boys come up to some of our patrol members and they, they said to them, we've been targeted and we really need your help. So by the members of our patrol standing with those boys, the people that were going to try and mug them went in a different direction. And I'm a true believer that we need more of an adult presence back on our streets. Um, I know some of you might look at us and think, well, it's mums and high-vis jackets, we've got grandparents involved now, we've got community members, but I think the more people that get involved in this, the stronger the community becomes. And we have had many, six, um, many successions like that, where we have stopped things from happening just from being there. Okay, Hannah. And that shows how active citizenship, as you've been describing, is so important. Um, could you also describe uh, the training that people go through? So obviously you have lots of different people involved in the initiative and yep. what is the, the training that they have? So what happens is all of our volunteers go through DBS checks. Now DBS checks changed earlier, um, I think it was late last year. So crazily people now need a dbs check for every single activity they're involved in so if you're a brownie leader and then if you join the patrol you need two separate dbs checks for that that's that's something else that i can talk about at a later date but um so what we've done is all the volunteers are going through dbs checks that's happening at the moment um, it was really important to us to make sure they understood safeguarding um, so we got Reverend Steve involved from St Andrew's Church, who's, you know, they do a lot of this in the community, for lots of different groups. So when a new volunteer is inducted onto the programme, we do give them information to read, um, and we do get them to sign a waiver form to say that they've read all the information about safeguarding. Now, training in general is something that we're still building on. Um, so we're talking to various people at the moment about first aid training, um, and also more about safeguarding. So this is stuff that will start to come in, A, when we get funding, and uh, B, when the patrols are more stable and things are working um, much better in that regard. But it's all on our agenda for making the uh, patrols more sustainable. So it's almost like an investment 
um, in people, active citizenship and investing in people because they're getting training and they're getting quite a lot from this really as individuals and for the community. I'll tell you what they're really getting out of it, um, which I've noticed is so many amazing friendships have been made. Right. And um, I'm the first one to say that, as you all know, I work a lot on my laptop and I've been out patrolling for seven months now and it gets me away from my laptop. It gets me back out in the community. I'm meeting people. I'm getting exercise. You do about 10,000 steps on each patrol. <laughs> so you're getting all of that. But I think it's the interaction and that people are feeling like they're part of something that's extremely important. Okay, um, let's, um, let, let's look at a couple of concerns that have come up, and I suppose I ought to put this to you because I know people have mentioned it. Concern number one is um, they think that you're a bit in the sort of vigilante culture and they're a bit worried about that. And the mm. second concern that people have come up is that, well, as volunteers, you're really replacing the police and making it more difficult for people to argue for more funds for more police. How do you sort of respond to those real concerns that people have? Sure. So vigilante, those that know me know I'm the complete opposite. I've never been a vigilante. And, and like I said to you earlier on in the interview, we felt vigilante was bubbling. So the reason Love Your Doorstep was called in to help with the patrol was to make sure that none of that happened. Um, in the early days of the patrol, I'll give you an example. We had a couple of volunteers, um, not mentioning any names, that kind of stepped over the mark a wee bit. So one, for example, was they took photos of um, a small gang. Um, I immediately dismissed them from the patrol and made it extremely clear that that is not what we're here for. So, um, you know, we have strict guidelines. We're not vigilante. What we are is we're eyes and ears for the police. Okay, in regards to the police and us being short on police in our borough, yeah, we have all noticed a huge reduction in police on the streets. But you'd actually be very surprised. Our policing teams, we work closely with the schools teams and the neighbourhood teams, and they have been an absolute pleasure to work with. Um, they, they don't feel we're getting in the way. Um, they, how do I say it? So we are a bit thin on the ground, but by having a community patrol, it's not going to um, change the fact that we need more police. We absolutely need more police. Um, but I just think it's all about that working together. Okay, Hannah? Would you say it's been a kind of like a morale boost for the local police because of, obviously everybody knows about the... Uh, cuts in police, but having the patrol has kind of helped in their boost, boost their morale, kind of become a better team or become a team. To... Yeah, I think, I mean, they're great teams anyway, but I think the fact that they feel they've got the support of the community makes such a huge difference. I mean, I see the hours that they work mm -hmm. and I see the work that they do and um, I definitely feel like they feel more supported and they've been nothing but welcoming and supportive of the work that we're doing, uh, which, is, which is great. So definitely, all round, it's been a mor morale boost. Yeah. Okay. Has there been a, uh, any gathering of intelligence uh, from the community patrol to give to the police? Or are they allowed to do that even? Yeah, so part of what we do is we do gather, uh, we do gather intelligence. Um, a lot of the times, the police know about this stuff anyway, um, but sometimes they don't. So there's definitely been a lot of working together in that regard. So the, the biggest thing is we're all communicating, and it's not just the police and the patrols, it's local businesses we're communicating with, we're communicating with all the volunteers, we're communicating with um, the school you know, so it's a joint up approach. We're communicating with the church. So this is a community approach to dealing with the issues that we've had with youth on youth crime. 
And, you know, when you do it, obviously, it, you get great satisfaction out of it. But have you got any evidence of sort of outputs? Have you noticed that there's a reduction of, uh, of muggings going on? Have you got any evidence of a reduction in crime? Um, what can you come up with on those areas? Yes, so um, that data has just been analysed at the moment, but from the data that we do have, in January there were 17 um, youth-on-youth robberies in Enfield Town, and by June there was four. So that could, uh, that could be due to a lot of things, the weather, it could be that, you know, the, light, uh, the days have got lighter, there could be a number of things. I'm going to be really honest with you. When I started doing the patrols in February, Enfield Town was unrecognisable. Completely unrecognisable to the Enfield Town that we all know and love. Now that we're out patrolling in September and we saw it change, it feels like Enfield Town again. So that's my feelings and I know that the volunteers feel the same. You know, people might also argue that we're just um, making the problems go elsewhere. Now, one thing I want to make really clear as well is we're not some middle class town going, we don't want bad boys on our streets. It's not like that. So we're working with a number of people across the borough. And I'll give you one example, Platinum Performing Arts. So uh, Nina Lewis at Platinum Performing Arts, um, they won a big lottery bid last year. And they are taking the most amazing scheme into our local schools to get children that might be on, for example, um, on the cusp of going in the wrong direction or, you know, they're, they're taking those children and they're helping them. So this isn't just us working silo, that this has to be a joint up approach um, across the borough, looking at why these things are happening. Are looking at the reason why children that get expelled are, are falling into gangs and you know there's so much going on so this is just a small part of what we are doing. Okay Hannah? Yes um, you mentioned school exclusions possibly that might be a reason why the atmosphere in the infield, uh, infield town was had gone down. Um, do you do you hope to expand the scheme in other areas where it's most needed maybe where there's a high rate of school exclusions or um, lack of local police patrolling the area? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's my vision to expand the patrol scheme. We've had a huge amount of interest um, from across London and also nationally. And we've had a lot of media coverage. It was never my intention that this would uh, get so much media coverage, but I think it's come from such a good place that um, this is something that could really be implemented across other communities across the UK. Um, so yeah, it, that is part of the vision. And we've now got three patrols in Enfield, so we've set up in Highlands. We do lunchtime in Enfield Town and we do after school in Enfield Town. Um, what we desperately need is more volunteers. So I don't want people to think this is scary. I think a lot of people think community patrol, you're out kind of kung fu fighting and taking on bad boys. It's really not like that. It's creating a visual presence in the town and we're there for the kids. And the kids have told us they feel safer. And, I mean, you mentioned that you're, you're looking at other areas. I mean, what sort of, um, you know, I mean, how many people have contacted you nationally, for example? Have you, have you had any international interest as well? I mean, is this something that you can see really taking off? And how successful do you think that might be? Um, I think it could be extremely successful. Like, that, you know, this is not new that the hours from after school to six o'clock at night, so three to six PM, a real danger hours for our children. And we don't want as parents to feel that our children are, are at danger heading home from school. It's just crazy. Um, we have got, I believe, and I think this is, um, you know, we have got backing from the Metropolitan Police. Um, they have been extremely supportive of the work that we're doing. 
and we've also got backing from other people. Now, one thing I wanted to do, and that is now being completed, is the patrol has been set up as its own um, CIC organisation. So we've got Love Your Doorstep Limited that does the work that we do and have done for eight years. But we've now got Love Your Doorstep Community CIC. Because the only way that this will be sustainable long, long term is if we get funding. And, you know, we've had a little bit of funding, luckily, through from MOPAC so far, which will help us expand the patrols a bit further in Enfield. Uh, but it's a real juggling game. So we've got to make sure we've got enough volunteers, that the training's been done, that we're communicating really well with the schools that want to work with us and the local community. So... Um, it is a real juggling act, but it does need a team of coordinators. So I'm literally doing this on my own. And the girls are running Love Your Doorstep. Um, I've got some incredible volunteers, though, that have been giving up their time for months and months on this. They are so passionate about it. And we have set up a small committee that those volunteers are involved in. So they do help me with some of the decision making that's going on. So, yeah, we definitely want to expand this to other areas. Okay, Hannah? I gather you've got funding from the Mayor's Office and you've been doing some crowdfunding. Um, can you tell us a bit more about that? Sure, so um, we've got a small pot of funding from MOPAC um, and that will help us with things like more equipment and training and the marketing of the actual patrols within Enfield. But it's nowhere near enough to say uh, sustainable. So... Um, we will be looking for other funding pots and we're talking to people at the moment about that. Like I said, it really needs a solid team behind it. Um, we've had interest from probably four or five other boroughs within London already. But what we're going to do is we're dealing with people that will be able to help us take this out pan London. So we're dealing with people on that higher level that are extremely interested in the model, um, they think the model that we have is fantastic and they also love the active citizenship part. Um, so that's where we are. But you've also had some spin-offs, haven't you, which are interesting, like getting more CCTV cameras outside of the grammar school. I mean, when you do something, people take notice and they do other things. Yeah, that was a real, uh, that was a really a joint initiative. So when the patrols were first um, being discussed with the head teacher of Enfield Grammar and Guy Jones Owen, the governor there, they also had a number of meetings with Enfield Council. Um, and I think they had Joan Ryan in as well. Joan was extremely supportive of the scheme. And um, one thing that was extremely noticeable was we had no CCTV cameras in Hollywalk or the churchyard area. Now, there was an incident in about, it must have been about May time, where some boys got off the bus outside McDonald's in Enfield Town. There was a, a, quite a big incident, actually, where police had to come on site immediately. But once people get to um, the King's Head pub, there's no CCTV cameras, which is absolutely crazy, because so many of us use that all the time, and the police had nothing. So um, we fought really hard to get the CCTV cameras in. And what's interesting is I know that residents in that area had been fighting for 10 years plus to try and get CCTV cameras in the area. Now, between the head teacher at Enfield Grammar and Guy Jones Owen, who really pushed for that CCTV camera footage, and a number of emails from myself to um, Ian Davis, the Chief Exec at Enfield Council, and also uh, to Andrea Clemens' team. Um, we have got those cameras going on. This is huge. So cameras will now be all over that area. The volunteers are so excited because they've been watching them go up. Um, so we're really excited. It shows that as a group, we can make things happen. And that's going to keep residents and children so much safer by having okay. this talk. Okay, I mean, that sounds great. You've obviously done a huge amount of work and um, you've been successful and you've got people together. Um, you've had spin-offs. You're looking at expanding it in, in, in London, in, in Enfield and in London, and, and you've got national interest as well. Well, we're sort of come to the end of our time now. 
but maybe you could uh, let us know that if you if there's anyone who wants to get involved who wants to volunteer or help in other in any other way i mean what do they do who do they contact and then what happens sure so you can go onto the love your doorstep website and on the home page of the infield site um, you'll see something that says say no to crime infield says no to crime um, and there's a form that you fill in if you'd like more information about becoming a volunteer. Now, this is a great scheme because you only, even if you've only got an hour a month, that's all we need. Um, and what will happen is you will receive an email from us about the next steps of how you become a volunteer with us. But this, um, this can be across any age group, 18 plus. So if you're interested, we would love to see you. Okay, well, that's, that's really great. Well, thanks for doing this. And, um, you know, even though you've been meeting with your New Zealander friends, we did understand every word you said. Um, <laughs> so it was fun. So, you know, thanks, thanks for, for doing it. And, I, you know, I hope that, succeed, that the scheme goes on from success to success. And I hope if anyone who's watching this is interested, they will contact you and that you will gradually develop. It's a big thing that you're doing, but it's great. So thank you for doing it. And thank you, thank Hannah, you. for helping with the questions. And it's been really, really great to hear from you. So thanks, thanks for guys. joining. Thank thanks you. for joining us. And we'll uh, end this interview now. Great.